start with a quick review for this book by Alan Watts. You are it on hiding, seeking, and being found. I'm going to give this book a three, maybe a high three even. Uh, problem is that I probably listen to too many of those books, and this one is a little too long. I think it's too long of hearing him, and there is a lot of overlap because it's just a combination of lectures. One doesn't follow the other. So just a combination of lecture, there's a lot of overlap between those, even in this book. And obviously there is a lot of overlap between those two other books. So it's a high three, maybe even end up giving this a four. Definitely some good ideas there. But if you've read other of his books, uh, there is less and less new things. So there is, again, lots of overlap, overlapping ideas among all of his talks. Let's see the notes. Chanting and such takes us out of our ma analytical mind into being one with the sounds. So that's one of chanting or praying. What it does, it takes us out of our mind, out of our analytical mind especially, and we are becoming one with the sound, which has its benefit. Much of life is represented, represented with yin and yang or zeros and ones, so it's kind of like a binary um, also like a war kind of going on between the yin and yang, kind of like another war competition. Both black and white colors play positive roles. White is positive because it's white. Black is positive because it has something that white doesn't. So we're talking about purely colors, paint colors. Which one? Both of them could be seen. Some Sometimes black is considered to be the negative one. What, what what he mentioned is that both of them could be seen as the positive because white obviously some that's the default apparently but black has something that white doesn't it has ink for example example like you're looking at a white like a paper it's all white it has nothing on it you put you draw something on it with a black ink then the black circle has something that the white doesn't that's an interesting in the viewpoint. Nothing is something. That's what it's like. There is not nothing. There is no nothing. If you have nothing, is it's it's something. Karma means that there is no distinction between what we do and what happened to us. So that's not karma. What people think karma because people took it out of the wrong out of context. It's like you're gonna get what you deserve. That's not karma. He says, "What re truly karma? What you, what it, what the intention was? Whoever created that idea, which is something in somewhere in Zen, in Eastern philosophy, is that there's no restriction what we do, the, the actions we take, and what happened to us. It's kind of one. Beginner's luck is not thinking before acting. So that's part of the idea behind beginner's luck. We don't think the first time. When we start thinking about it, we fuck up things. The life we live now could be what we would eventually dream of in order to look for a surprise. So that's a, that's a very, very interesting thought experiment. This is like, what happens if you could do everything you want? So that eventually what you do, you would try to find surprises, which is basically the life we have right now. Not fully convinced on that one, but it's just an interesting thought experiment. Buddhism fundamentally offers no doctrine, doctrines. Rather, it shows that problems are illusions. That's the main idea behind Buddhism, that problems are just illusions we have. Your religion is a life of obedience according to rules. That's what religion fundamentally is. Obedience based on rules. We have a hard time grasping things with more than three variables. So X, Y, and Z, we understand that. When it comes to like the, the fourth dimension, for example, we're, we're lost. Same thing with other dimensions, uh, other things with more than three variables. We, we have a hard time tracking all of it. Thinking of the, the one example is music. If there's more than three layers, it's starting to get a little confusing. 
Next one is, according to the author, by trying to be better, we are sabotaging ourselves. That's why I said according to the author, because I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a problem, because we are need, we do need to, we always do evolve and become better. He says, like, that's how we sabotage ourselves. I don't know, it's, it's hard to comprehend exactly what he means there, if it's even comprehensible. And it's like this quote, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, not, in, not his idea. But what he says is, we don't know what is better for us. We don't really know. So maybe that goes with the earlier quote, that we're trying to be better. Well, what is better? The next one is, most religions are based on monarchical ideas where one person is the king and should be treated in some particular way. Most religions are based on a monarch, which is like a king. The question that I have on top of that is, what comes first? Who created the idea? I, I, I wanted to say that it's just a hierarchy, and we had an idea before we invented the religion. That's the way I see things. And that makes sense that we created some kind of a king, because that's how we see everything. According to the author, there is no point of looking down on the matter because there isn't one. He says there's no point of like keep looking deeper and deeper into matter and our electron, electrons and protons and all that, all those molecules and subatomic particles because there isn't one. There is eventually nothing. Again, again, according to the author, because I think there is a lot of benefits of looking deeper into things and trying to understand how they work. We already have some a lot of benefits drawn from those analyses. Next one is according to the author, because we depend on the environment, we are a part of it. Is that the case? It's again based on the according to the author because I don't fully agree with that. He says <clears throat> we are one with our environment because we are a part of it. I think there is some distinction to draw between being one to be some dependent on the environment. It doesn't make us one with our environment. There's a difference between a rock to you. And he said there is no distinction. That's where I have a problem with this, some of his philosophy. We are stuck with linear processing. That is our conscious mind. Our conscious mind is basically linear on uh, processing. We see things in a linear way. We can see uh, more complex phenomena. Our conscious mind is linear. It's one thing, one line. Next one is the ego is an illusion. So that's fundamentally also the idea of Buddhism that the ego is does not exist. Exist. It's a, it's an illusion. And the last one, what we think to be the controller of thought is a thought. So that's kind of an idea of meditation. Goes into meditation is when we feel like we're in control of the thought. That is a thought. That's just a little. <laughs> that's always funny to remind ourselves. And even that is a thought. That's it for the notes. Again, some interesting parts definitely. It's lots. So that's a three, maybe a high three. Eventually might end up giving this a four. Some interesting ideas. I don't agree with all of them as you as you just seen. But definitely entertaining. Thought provoking, food for thought, all of the all of the above. I would recommend this this one is a little too long. There's some shorter ones. But overall, especially if you haven't listened to some of it. I would recommend. Thank you.